Hello again. I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org, and I'm back this time with a quick comparison of the Tamron SP 35mm f1.8 VC, which costs about $600, and the similarly priced Canon 35mm f2, which costs about $550. This is actually the first of two videos. The second will compare the Tamron with the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art series lens. I shot for both videos last summer before I started traveling, and I'm just getting to them now. But before we get into the details, a couple of things. First, I'm finally catching up with the times, and I now have an Instagram account, so you can follow me there if you have any interest. There's a link below but it's matthew.lightandmatter. Also, if you're a subscriber, make sure that you click on this little notification bell here just to make sure that you get notified of new videos and replies to your comments and that sort of thing. Okay, back to these lenses. They're both stabilized lenses and relatively compact, though the Tamron is about half an inch longer and five ounces heavier. Another significant difference in the bodies of these lenses is with weather sealing. That is, the Tamron is nicely weather sealed while the Canon is not sealed at all. And of course, the maximum aperture of the Tamron is a third of a stop larger. I spent a couple of weeks shooting with these lenses around the city of Seattle. I shot raw files with the 5D Mark III from a sturdy tripod with the mirror locked up and image stabilization off, focusing with live view. I used a timer or remote release for each shot then processed them as 16-bit RAW files without extra sharpening or lens corrections in Adobe Camera Raw. You can see more examples or download some of the example RAW files from the full review on our website. That link is in the description below. So let's start by taking a look at the resolution of these lenses wide open with the Canon at f2 and the Tamron at 1.8. In the center of the image, there's hardly any difference but I'd say that the fine details on the Space Needle are slightly sharper on the Canon side, but it's pretty insignificant in practical terms. They're both nice and sharp. Moving away from the center a bit, I'd say that any advantage that the Canon had has disappeared. At the borders of the frame, the Tamron gives us sharper detail on these broadcast towers, and the image is generally a bit more contrasty. On the opposite side of the frame, the difference is less apparent. Comparing apples to apples with both lenses at f2, the Canon may be negligibly sharper, but I can't really tell, not even here at 100%. Down here, away from the center again, they both look nice and sharp, and looking at the man on the bench and the chain link fence on the baseball backstop, I don't see any obvious differences. Back out at the edge, again, I think the Tamron is a little more contrasty. Stopping down to f2.8, we get a little bit better resolution in the center from both lenses, but neither one pulls away from the other with an obvious advantage. And I'm disappointed to say that the same thing is true down here away from the center. Out at the edge of the frame, I think that the Tamron is noticeably sharper. And on the other side of the frame, it also looks more contrasty, though I'm not sure we're really seeing any more resolution. Stopping down to f4, again, the center resolution and the resolution down here are excellent with no major differences. And out here at the edge, I think that the Canon has caught up to the Tamron. Jumping up to f8, I don't see any differences anymore across the frame. So let's take a look at one more set. Here, with both lenses wide open, they're both really sharp again, but the Canon looks a bit sharper, and there's noticeable chromatic aberration in the high contrast areas on the Tamron side. It's not bad, but it's visible down here in the corner. The antennas here away from the center look a touch sharper on the Tamron side, but up here at the top edge of the frame, they look pretty similar. With both lenses at f2, the Canon is still marginally sharper in this area than the Tamron, probably as a result of the chromatic aberration. But again, both are really sharp. There's no problem seeing cables on the crane or any other fine details with either lens. 
down here in the corner of the frame, looking at this text and these flowers, there's virtually no difference, but the Tamron has a little more contrast, probably because of the vignetting on the Canon lens. And looking up here, the Tamron is sharper. This text is more legible on the Tamron side, and there's a foggy sort of halo around this bright roof on the Canon side. Stopping down to f2.8, the halo is gone from the Canon side, but there's a bigger improvement in detail on the Tamron, which remains sharper. As before, there's more color fringing on the Tamron side though, especially up here on the roof. This can usually be fixed in post-processing pretty easily, but it's always better to start with less. Up at the top of this building, we also see more detail and contrast on the Tamron, but no color fringing here. Back down in the center, the resolution has evened out, though the Canon may still be a touch sharper. Stopping down further to f5.6, the difference is negligible. Both are very sharp, but the Canon's details may be a bit more crisp. Up here at the top, the Canon has nearly caught up with the Tamron, though the Tamron still has a slight edge, and out here, the chromatic aberration on the Tamron is nearly gone, and the detail in these antennas is noticeably sharper. Again, you can look at more examples in the full review on the website, but to sum up, both lenses are wonderfully sharp, and while the Canon is slightly sharper in the center of the frame, below f8, the Tamron is sharper away from the center and especially towards the borders. To test out the autofocus, I went to a local skate park and shot some of the guys rolling around there. With the Canon, I rarely had any misses. I shot guys riding straight at me at a good clip, and focus was nice and sharp. And when I took single shots, the lens locked focus fast enough to capture the action I was looking for. I was more concerned about the Tamron's autofocus, as it's a third-party lens, so I shot with it a little longer. I found that it performed just as well as the Canon though. Tracking was fast and accurate, and the focus locked quickly. I also tried shooting in some harsh backlight to see how it would handle it, and there was no hunting or missed focus. I also had no troubles with either lens out at the beach shooting landscapes. I was particularly impressed with the fact that the Canon didn't give me any color fringing problems, even shooting fine details against the sun. And even though I had seen some color fringing with the Tamron at times in the city, I found that I didn't have any problems with it this time, even before corrections. Stabilization is always hard to test, but especially with wide-angle lenses. Canon claims four stops of stabilization, while Tamron only claims three stops. What does that mean? Without stabilization, a good photographer should expect to get acceptable sharpness shooting with a shutter speed of about a 40th of a second with a 35mm lens. One stop below a 40th would be a 20th of a second, one stop below that would be a 10th, and one stop below that would be a 5th. Another stop below that would be 4 tenths. The problem is that below about a 15th of a second, image stabilization just isn't usually very effective. But I tried anyway, shooting first with the Canon in a candlelit cathedral down to 4 tenths of a second. The results were mostly usable down to about a tenth of a second, but were all too blurry below that. With the Tamron, the same thing was true, though I had one lucky shot that was sharp at 4 tenths. Then I got out a neutral density filter and tried shooting some handheld shots at the beach to see if the stabilization would be sufficient to substitute for a tripod to get a little bit of water movement. The first three here were with the Canon, and the second three with the Tamron. The quick answer is, as we expected, no, not really. I got a little too much camera shake for my taste with all of these images, though maybe they'd be okay for the internet. In general, both lenses were great down to about a tenth of a second. That's about two stops worth of stabilization. With the Tamron, only about half of the images at a tenth of a second were usable, and slower than that, usable images were pretty rare. With the Canon, 
I was surprised that a high percentage of my shots at a fifth of a second and a quarter of a second were pretty usable, but none were any good below that. So, the Canon probably does have a real advantage of at least a half of a stop of stabilization over the Tamron. Now a quick look at Bokeh. The difference between the Tamron at 1.8 and the Canon at f2 is noticeable, with the Bokeh balls slightly larger on the Tamron, but it's less significant than I expected. Zooming in on the detail, the lights are smooth and moderately round on the Canon side, with no artifacts, while on the Tamron side, we see some concentric circles in the lights, often called onion rings, which are typical of lenses that use aspheric elements. When the Tamron is stopped down to f2 to match the Canon, the light balls become similarly sized, but the shapes are irregular but roundish, while the lights on the Canon side are more regular but lemon-shaped. Close up again, we still see the onion rings on the Tamron side, but the contrasty borders around the lights on each side are very similar. Neither one produces perfect bokeh. You'll have to choose according to your own personal taste. And finally, let's take an even quicker look at vignetting. Neither lens produces significant darkening in the corners until about f2.8, where the Canon starts to darken. At f2, the Canon has very strong vignetting, probably two stops darker in the corners, maybe even a little bit more. On the other hand, the Tamron has a very moderate amount at f2, and hardly any more wide open at f1.8. This explains why the Tamron remains so much more contrasty around the edges compared to the Canon at f2 and f2.8. So where does that leave us? First, let me remind you that I can only report what I have seen with the lenses that I've tested, and this review is based on the assumption that they are typical examples. There's always some variation in production though, so your results may vary. But in summary, I'd say that when it comes to resolution, they're both great lenses, but I'd probably choose the across-the-frame sharpness of the Tamron over the slightly better performance of the Canon in the center, since my subjects are usually off-center anyway. But if you shoot centered subjects, you might want to choose the Canon. The autofocus performance of both lenses was excellent. I had no problems with either one. The stabilization of the Canon was a little better than the Tamron, though the Tamron's was certainly better than not having any. Bokeh is a matter of taste, and the vignetting is controlled much better on the Tamron than the Canon. It's also worth noting that the Canon is slightly smaller and lighter than the Tamron, but the Tamron is weather sealed, while the Canon is not. And when it comes to price, there's about a $50 difference. And that's it. Don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be notified when I publish my comparison of the Sigma and the Tamron in the next couple of weeks. And thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below or on our site if you have any questions.